Hi there and welcome to this video on the YOLO Box Pro from YOLO Live. In this video, I'll be doing a full overview of all of the functionality and all of the menus from the YOLO Box Pro. So you can think of this as an interactive manual. And if you haven't done already, do check out my video review of the YOLO Box Pro. So as you'll see here, this is the screen that you're greeted with when you turn the unit on. And it gives you the option to either go into live stream or monitor mode. So go ahead and click the plus button. The difference between the two modes, as you would probably guess, is that you can obviously live stream in live stream mode. Monitor mode offers similar functionality, but it's basically just a sort of sandbox environment. If you want to test out the unit, you want to play with the settings, it does everything other than the live stream mode. So uh, you can check either one. Obviously, if you are using this box just as a monitor, which it does a very good job, it's an excellent eight inch screen, uh, 400 nits, pretty bright. So you can just use this uh, unit as a monitor on your camera and therefore that you're going to select monitor mode. But we'll go into live stream mode and the first thing it's going to do is ask you to create a live stream. So we'll just go ahead and give this a quick title. And then we can create our live stream. So this is the default screen that you come into as soon as you start a live stream and you will see down the bottom I have my HDMI sources and the various things that I have plugged in to the back. So here I actually have two camera feeds, an HDMI one which is actually the camera that I'm using to film this. So you'll see the inception mode there going through the screen. I have a second one which is just filming the back of the unit here so you can actually see the connected ports. So I have two HDMIs, I have a USB webcam, which I'll go ahead and select. And we're filming on an old school, I think this is a 720p webcam, so the quality is obviously pretty low, but you can see we have that there. And then I have a couple of videos which are loaded onto the SD card, which are inserted into the unit. And I have them as two video feeds as well. So this by default is the streaming interface. And you can see here we have the various social media sites that you can stream to natively. And I have a my YouTube channel connected to this. And it's just literally as simple as selecting the type of stream that I want, pressing done, And now I'm ready. So all I would do is hit that go live button and I would be streaming to YouTube. One thing to note from YouTube is that when you select these options here, public, unlisted or private, if you're streaming to public, that's fine because it's just going to show up on YouTube straight away. If you are streaming unlisted or privately, what I found is that you will need to go onto YouTube on a computer, go into the YouTube studio interface, find the live and actually get the link so you can then share that with people. So that's just something to note if you are doing unlisted or private streaming. Most people obviously when they're streaming gonna be public and that's obviously just gonna appear on your channel on YouTube. Okay, moving across the tabs down the bottom, we'll go to the overlays tab and this allows you to place lower thirds and various different overlays, whatever you choose from files that are loaded onto your SD card. So if we want to add a new one, we click the plus button. And here we can use the lower thirds, which are the default ones which are on the device. And if you want to select one, you can then go ahead and change the position just by dragging. You can obviously enter your own text and your own titles. You can change the font. You have a range of different fonts, which is quite nice. You can change colors and all of the other options there. What we can also do is we can add in our own ones. And if you have these loaded onto the SD card, for example, so we will use this one, we can scale it. So change the size and we can just move it around wherever we want on the image. When we're happy with that, we select done and that will load it up in here. So when we are streaming and we want to bring those things up, we just go ahead and tap on the ones and tap on again to unselect and they will disappear. So that's the overlays menu. 
The other option that you do have is to add a countdown timer. So if you are waiting for your stream to start or you're putting the pause in, you can add those in nice and handy. Okay, let's move on now to the audio mixer. And the audio mixer gives you a host of options here. So if we start here with the program monitor, so this is what your audience will hear. You have the ability to mute it by turning off the sound and so they won't hear anything from any of the mics. AFV stands for always follow video. So what that means is that the audio will always follow the video. So as you move around the different video sources, whatever the audio is for that source, it will broadcast that through to your audience. Most of the time, you're probably gonna want that off and what you want is the audio that your mics are plugged into. So for example, here my mic is connected to HDMI 1 and I will go ahead and turn that on and you'll see there that although I am selected a video, the audio is coming from HDMI 1 and there is my audio level there that I can monitor. And so that for me, as that my microphone is connected to that HDMI, if I was doing a live stream and I wanted to talk over this video, I can. So what's really handy is the ability to actually mix multiple audio channels and you can mix up to three. So for example here I could have HDMI 2 on and I don't actually have any mics going into HDMI 2 other than the onboard camera mic but I can actually change the level of that just by dragging this slider. So if one source is much louder than the other you can mix them using the levels there which is really, really handy. And you have that for every source that you have plugged in. So go down and that includes the videos that you're showing. So for example, if uh, maybe this video had a, the levels were set very high, I could drop them down. You also have the ability to add in an audio delay. So if there is a slight lag between your video and your audio, you can add in a delay there and you've got real granular level of control. So moving across now to this tab, this is a scoreboard. And so this is if you're live streaming sports events, this enables you to add in a scoreboard and you have the ability to add that wherever you like. You can change the size of it and the ability to change the score by clicking up. So every time your team or the team scores a goal, or a point you can add that in you can have a clock on there as well and you can set the time of that and you can even have different styles so you can change the color of the um, scoreboard you can change the fonts and even add in logos as well so for people that are doing uh, streaming of live sporting events you've got quite a lot of functionality built in there so moving on to the next tab is the comments tab and I believe this has functionality in YouTube and Facebook. And what this will do is that if you have people commenting on your live stream, they will show up in this right hand panel here. You can reply to comments. Um, this is how they will appear. And once again, you can change all of the options, fonts, colors, transparency, and that's how your comments will show up on the videos. So if we move on to the auto switch tab, what this allows you to do is automatically switch between video sources. And this is designed for people who are operating as a one man band who are presenting and don't necessarily wanna be looking down and switching. What this allows you to do is set a duration for each video source. And then when we turn that on, what will happen here, I have the time set to five seconds, is that every five seconds, it will switch in the order that I've set. So HDMI one to SD card video one to SD card video two. And that's because the switching order here is set to sequential. If I wanted that to mix those up, I could select it to random. And then once it has finished playing, my main video source is set to SD card video one. And so what that will do is then go back to default SD card video one once it's finished going through that cycle, it will go back to that. And you can obviously change that to whatever you want it to be. So now we'll go through the settings tab and we'll work through the list top to bottom. So we have the video source switching mode, click to switch or double click. 
default is click to switch. Obviously, if you accidentally touched the screen, it could change your video. So if it's that critical, you might wanna change it to double click. And so you're having to double click just to confirm the switching of the video input. SD card video switching settings. What that does is that when you switch away from the SD card, it will continue on playing. So as you can see down the preview, we have those videos playing. So if we have it select to pause when switching, if we move away from it and then come back to it, it will start at where it left off. So that's probably the most handy one because obviously if you're coming away from the video, you're probably gonna be talking about something else and then you might wanna regain the video and it will start from where you left off. If you have it to rever resume first frame and pause when switching, what will happen is that when you switch away from it and come back to it, it will begin at the start of the video. SD card management just shows you the total amount of size on the SD card that you have inserted and it shows you what files are on it that the device can read. Program out. When you toggle that on, if you are sending the signal out to another monitor, that monitor will then show you exactly what your audience is seeing, okay, rather than just this device with all of the uh, individual feeds. So that's really handy if you've got a second monitor connected up. USB-C out allows you to connect a device via USB-C. The device recommends that you always use three HDMI sources rather than the USB-C, but if you are connected for that, you can use that one as well. Video source transitions allows you to change the default um, cut between each video source. So you have fade, wipe, directional wipe, translation, window slice, simple zoom, cross zoom, squeeze, flip page, and cube and you also have the ability to change the duration of that. So just as a very quick example, if we place a wipe and then we select, you'll see it will perform that transition. Streaming mode allows you to change between direct single platform stream and using multi-streaming services. So when we were on that original tab, if you want to push your stream to more than one uh, social media channel, you can do that and you need to make sure that you allow multi-streaming through that option there. And you can stream up to three platforms simultaneously. The video output mode allows you to select between HDMI out and DisplayPort out. So depending on what type of monitor that you are connected to, it allows you to change between those two settings. Encoding settings allows you to select different options. So you have the variable bit rate, the constant bit rate, which is the default and recommended. It allows you to alter the bit rate and the frames per second. So depending on your connection, the type of streaming you're doing, you can alter those. If you obviously have a very strong and fast connection, you can up the bit rate, but obviously the smoothness of your stream might be affected. I found that the default and recommended constant bit rate works very well. And as long as you have a decent internet connection, the streaming experience on this device is excellent. And so finally, the recording limits. If you're recording your stream as well as live streaming, what this does is this saves on the SD card every 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you wanna select by. And what this has the ability to do is that if you do have a crash or a problem, or say your battery runs out, that it will have saved every 10 minutes so you will only lose the last 10 minutes of when the battery dies. So that is an overview of all of the functionality and every menu on the Yellow Box Pro. Hopefully that has been useful. If you do have any questions or specific comments, please drop them below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.